Well, hey guys, I hope your week is going well. It's just me and Totoro here early this morning. I have some uh, Bustello coffee with some of that Four Sigmatics Chaga Elixir. I'm really enjoying that stuff. It imparts a nice creamy taste to the coffee. Um, so if you're into if you're into the mushroom drinks, I I recommend it. I've really been enjoying it. Um, but hope everyone's summer is going well. Has anyone gotten a sunburn yet? I sure hope not. If you have, um, or if you're attempting to avoid a sunburn, as you should be, this video hopefully will be helpful to you. I'm going to go over my top five reasons why sunscreens fail and kind of give you some tips and, and pointers to, to, uh, to avoid things to do to ensure that you don't get a sunburn um, and to help protect the health of your skin with your sunscreens, particularly on the body at this, uh, as summer goes along. <laughs> but probably the number one reason why sunscreens fail is that you picked the wrong one. <laughs> you wanna pick the sunscreen that you actually like, the one that you wanna apply, the one that you like the way it feels and that you feel good about applying and reapplying. To me, and you know what the data suggests is the number one reason why sunscreens fail is that people don't like them and don't use them. So they're useless and without them, you, you know, you get a burn when you're outdoors. So pick one that you like. Preferably a sunscreen in a cream or lotion vehicle. The reason being that cream and lotion vehicles allow an even distribution of the sunscreen molecules to afford a good sun protective film. Uh, sprays are, are very, very popular sunscreen sprays. Um, they're controversial amongst dermatologists. Uh, we like that people like them and are using them and reapplying them and feel good about them. But the problem with sunscreen and spray vehicles is they just don't reliably distribute the sunscreen active ingredients effectively, particularly if you spray them outdoors, you lose a lot of the spray and the active ingredients to the atmosphere rather than, than putting it on your skin. So, you know, I can go over some tips on how to apply spray sunscreens if those are the only ones that you, that you can hack. Um, but do know that they are just less reliable as far as their, their ability to distribute those sunscreen molecules. Likewise, sticks are really popular, sunscreen sticks. And um, it's just really hard to get a good even monolayer of sunscreen in the stick form. And then the type of sunscreen. We have mineral sunscreens, we have combination sunscreens, and we have chemical sunscreens. In my sunscreen Q&As, I've explained the differences between these three categories. But in the United States specifically, um, choosing a mineral exclusive sunscreen is a little bit better than choosing a chemical sunscreen. And the reason being that sunscreens protect us from a burn. Um, but they also should protect us from the damaging effects of ultraviolet light in the form of UVA that doesn't necessarily burn our skin but penetrates very deeply, ages, is largely responsible for sun aging, photo aging, skin aging, wrinkles, and pigmentary problems, but also really can suppress the immune system in our skin and set the stage for skin cancers. And you want, not only do you want reliable protection against a burn, but you want reliable protection against that UVA uh, for both cosmetic and health reasons down the road. And in the United States specifically, our mineral sunscreens offer good protection against both the burning UVB rays as well as UVA. I will list some of my favorites down below as far as good mineral exclusive sunscreens for the body and the face um, that you can find at the drugstore at a very affordable price. I'm a big fan, obviously, of the Vanny Cream sunscreens. Aveeno Baby makes a phenomenal zinc sunscreen. Uh, no AD makes a wonderful uh, mineral exclusive sunscreen that you can get at Walmart. All very affordable, good UVB, UVA protection. Um, and then, for those of you not in the United States, in Europe, Japan, other countries in Asia, Australia, New Zealand, you all, your sunscreens, your chemical sunscreens, you have filters that are not FDA approved here that are more stable and are a better insurance policy for UVA protection than our chemical sunscreens. So I like many of the European and Japanese chemical sunscreens and use them on my body frequently. Um, I just find that they offer more reliable UVA protection because their chemical filters 
are more stable. They don't degrade like ours do when, when we go out in the sun as readily. So I feel more comfortable using them. We don't have any side-by-side -side comparison data between American sunscreens and European or Japanese sunscreens. Um, this is really just my personal preference and what I think works better based on all of the all of the scientific literature that I've reviewed on sunscreen active ingredients and their stabilities. Mineral sunscreens in the United States I think offer much more reliable protection than our chemical sunscreens in the United States, but a real shortcoming of them is that they do leave a pretty significant white cast. And you may be okay with that while you're at the beach, you know, with your family doing fun things outside on the body, you may not have a problem with it. But the cast can really be cosmetically a problem, particularly if you're a darker skin type. Um, and so using a tinted mineral sunscreen can actually overcome this hurdle. And also tinted mineral sunscreens frequently have an inactive ingredient called iron oxides in them, which offers a little bit more protection against some of the visible light that further drives hyperpigmentation. So choosing a tinted mineral sunscreen for areas of the body um, like the forearms where we get a lot of those sunspots, those little dark discolorations, age spots, using a tinted sunscreen on those areas, upper chest in, in women, you know, you can get a lot of sunspots up here when you're wearing a, um, a blouse with the v-neck the upper back. It can be a really good choice. It blends in. Many of you have verbalized in the comments that you work in an outdoor setting professionally. You're wearing short sleeves in the summertime and you don't want to have, you can't, you can't have that white cast as part of your, it's just not acceptable in your profession. And so choosing a tinted mineral body sunscreen is a good choice. There really aren't very many out there and I was so ecstatic to see that Color Science came out with a tinted body sunscreen their Sun Forgettable Total Protection Body Shield SPF 50. You guys know I am really enjoying the Color Science uh, Mineral Tinted Face Shield. I wear it every day. I've also enjoyed their 3 in 1 Eye. Um, and so they reached out to me and are sponsoring this portion of the video. Um, you guys have even asked me to review their body sunscreen. Um, and I've really been liking it quite a bit. It is a very nice lightweight mineral sunscreen with a universal tint. Um, it comes out like a nice thick cream, just like you need to get a good, good layer um, on, the, on the skin. And it has a universal tint so that it blends into the skin very nicely, very lightweight um, and will not exacerbate any, any oiliness, shininess, acne on the upper back or um, upper chest area. It's great for the top of the hands where you get those sunspots and it um, you know doesn't leave any cast whatsoever and the tint is good for all skin tones and that it is universal. It really just kind of melts right into the skin. They've really done a great job with the, with the formulation of this. Not only is it mineral exclusive, but it's got the iron oxides in there, a universal tint. It, it virtually melts into the skin and is invisible. Super lightweight, but also moisturizing. It's shea butter based. This will not uh, break you out if you have acne on the upper back or upper chest or you're prone to acne there, particularly in the summer. A lot of people get breakouts on the upper chest. This is not going to exacerbate that. Fragrance-free, water-resistant SPF 50. They really, really, really did a stellar job with the formulation of this body sunscreen. On the pricier side, as their sunscreens are, but if it is in your budget, and particularly if you are somebody in a profession where you're outdoors all day, you know, like a newscast, or something like that. Um, this one is, you know, I truly do like this sunscreen a lot. But yeah, I have yet to see a body sunscreen out there that is tinted. So I applaud Color Science for stepping up and really creating a fantastic formulation. They are, um, they have <laughs> kindly um, given me a coupon code to share with you all. It's in the description box. Um, for those of you who um, are interested in, in any of their products, I do recommend them. I've really been happy with all of them and continue to use, continue to use them as you, you probably saw in my recent skincare routine. But with the coupon code, you can also get um, the bronzer. Um, for those of you, you know, it's a nice combination. For those of you who are outside, it's almost kind of like a makeup sunscreen mambo combo. So that's, that's there if you're interested in the description box. 
All right, but now that you have the right sunscreen, the second reason why sunscreens fail is that you did not apply enough sunscreen. How much sunscreen are we supposed to be applying? I think it's an incredibly confusing topic to navigate. People ask me many questions about it. And I recently came across an article that I'm ecstatic to share with you guys the findings of. I think this little tip is just so brilliant. You wanna put it on at two milligrams per centimeter square. And we already know that pe most consumers put on about a third of that. Um, so they never really achieve the SPF on the bottle. That is why we say 30 to 50, because most consumers put it on at roughly a third of what they're supposed to so they're getting a much much lower SPF than what's what's actually going to protect them from a burn all right so and hence why it fails but the surface area of the face and neck of the average adult is roughly 685 centimeters squared okay so 685 times 2 milligrams means that you would need 1370 milligrams or roughly 1.37 grams of sunscreen to cover your entire face and neck, all right? Um, you all are probably familiar with one of these guys, right? I mean, who hasn't seen one of these? This is a crown bottle cap, a metal crown bottle cap. Um, this I found on the ground and washed and sterilized. It comes from an adult beverage, I hope, which was consumed responsibly. Um, but, you know, you can get these on soda bottles or whatever. Um, but anyways, one of these, if you fill one of these, it will give you exactly 3.3 grams of a cream, okay? in a cream vehicle. So let's just squeegee out here, 3.3 um, grams. So this is 3.3 grams of sunscreen right here. This will cover 9% of the adult body surface area roughly, okay? And so you can break that down into, into regions. One arm of the average adult is gonna be one capful. That's how much sunscreen you need to cover one arm of, of the average adult. And you need two capfuls to cover the leg of the average adult. And you need two capfuls to cover the back of the average adult. And you need two capfuls to cover the torso, the front torso of the average adult. So yeah, this is 3.3 this is milligrams of sunscreen. This is how much sunscreen that you need to cover um, your entire head and neck. All right, so if you're bald, this is how much sunscreen you need to cover your entire face, neck, ears, um, and, and scalp. If you're not bald and you just need to cover your face and ears and neck, you really only need about half of this, okay? Look in the description box below and I'll tell you how many, how many crown caps of sunscreen you need for each area. Uh, but it's, it's one for each arm and two for each legs and two for the front of you and two for the back of you and then the one for your, your head and neck. So a third reason why your sunscreen may have failed is that you didn't apply it correctly. Um, and I find that tends to be the case with the spray sunscreens. Um, this is a spray sunscreen that a viewer sent to me. I've never actually used it before. I don't personally use spray sunscreens. Uh, this is seriously fab, zinc it over. But this, this one happens to be a mineral sunscreen. It says unscented, but it does have fragrance in it. This is seriously fab. I've never heard of this, actually. Um, it's cruelty-free and vegan, no BT dubs. You want to shake it up first, and then you actually want to apply sunscreens um, in spray forms very very close to the skin if you're outdoors um you know go somewhere where there's not any wind try and go indoors a lot of times sprays are you know aerosolized out into the into the air if there's a wind you're just you're spraying the mosquito not your skin but get it really close on there and rub it in um just as you would a cream um ooh, this does go in really nicely and the other shortcoming with the sprays is that we don't know their safety um, if, when they're inhaled. We don't know how safe it is to be inhaling um, sunscreen. So for the face, particularly for when you're helping your kids put the sunscreen on, spray it into your hands before you put it on your face and then rub it in. But these are nice. Um, yeah, this definitely has fragrance in it, by the way. I think it has blueberry in it or something. Okay. 
but spray it into your hands before putting it on your face. That way you're not inhaling, inhaling the, the fumes. And this one's nice because it's not aerosolized. It's just a liquid, a liquid vehicle, but still um, it is atomized, you know, like, like a room spray and you don't want to be inhaling that. Um, but that's a good one. See, you can see if I just, if I'm just doing this, it, it, it's largely getting all over the place, right? Like it's behind me. I'm, I'm just in, in a room here. So get it really close to the skin. Don't inhale. <laughs> um, another common pitfall with sunscreen application is skip areas. You can really run into this problem with a lot of the sticks. So for the sticks, I find that stick to the stick around the eyes. Uh, it's helpful for putting it around the eyes, but otherwise it's just difficult to difficult to get that that stick all over the body in a in a consistent in a consistent manner without the skip areas. In addition to kind of the pitfalls with the sprays being aerosolized, the sticks having skip areas. Another common pitfall in sunscreen application is that they actually should be applied before you go outside. Um, they should be applied about 20, roughly 20 minutes before you go outdoors. And the reason is, is that they need to form a good protective film uh, before, before going out. And that takes a little bit of time. So make sure you put them on before. Reason number four that sunscreens fail is that you fail to reapply them. They need to be reapplied every two hours while you're outdoors. Uh, people ask me, do I need to come back inside then to, to reapply them? No, just continue to go about your, your day. I mean, ideally, yes, you would come back indoors, but not everyone's gonna be able to do that. So just reapply them um, every two hours while you're outdoors. You also need to reapply them when you get out of the water, um, when you get out of the pool or ocean, even if they are uh, water resistant, you still need to be reapplying them when you get out of the water. Um, sunscreens, you know, we sweat them off, they rub off, they need to be reapplied consistently throughout the day um, and every two hours while you're outdoors for ongoing photo protection, insurance against a burn. <laughs> they need to be reapplied. And then the fifth reason why sunscreens fail is that the product has expired. Sunscreens should be replaced at least every three years, um, roughly. Oftentimes they will have an expiration date on them, so make sure you follow that. The inactive ingredients can degrade and compromise the stability of the active ingredients. Um, and you know some of the filters, if they're chemical sunscreens, can degrade with time. Also, don't store your sunscreens out in the car in a hot in, in a hot car. Don't store them outside. Keep them indoors in a cool, dry place uh, to ensure the stability of the product. So make sure you follow the manufacturer's expiration date recommendations and guidelines. Don't use expired products. And people are always like, I left my sunscreen in the car. It's super hot. Is it still effective? I don't know what to tell you, but you know, I, I wouldn't run the risk of it. It's like my tire looks a little flat. Should I get on the interstate? Mm, probably not. <laughs> I can't tell you how far you're gonna go with that one. Same holds true with sunscreens. But yeah, if you left it outside or it got too hot, just start fresh, get a new tube. It's your, it's your skin health, it's skin cancer, you know, don't, don't run that risk. So that would be, that would be reason number five that sunscreens fail. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed these tips in this video. Again, check the description box for the bottle cap um, amounts that, and hopefully that little tool is helpful to you guys. I'll put the article reference as well and the Color Science coupon code for those of you who are interested. Thank you, Color Science, for sponsoring that portion of the video. I really enjoy their sunscreens quite a bit. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.